Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lunch Money. I'm your host, Gina Savage. I'm the founder of Sunshine State Comedy. I'm a talent booker and a whole bunch of stuff. I'm joined with comedian and host of Christy Unleashed, Christy Miller. Here we are. I almost forgot your name. Like, <laughs> like where the, oh, we were having. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I'm ne I'll never get the opening of the show right. Hey, welcome to lunch. <laughs> what's your What's your name? She's suffering in the heat in the New York City heat. This poor child, my friend. Oh my God! I'm melting. I'm melting. <laughs> She's freaking melting. I swear to God. Welcome to the new noon. Hmm. Yeah. It's hot in New York, huh? Oh, everybody's balls must be sticking to their legs right now. It is so fucking hot. My vag lip balls are sticking to my leg right now. <laughs> I didn't know lip balls uh, existed in a vag, but yay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the fans coming in handy. Look at this. <laughs> exactly. Use oh, Beyonce. it. Beyonce. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god yeah i mean look crazy right now <laughs> oh, i'm telling you uh what a week we just had what a week which will we say this every week but last week i mean wow i i have to start by paying homage to two greats to two greats um yeah. charles groden yep. um rest in peace so uh, uh very uh well not very close but close to marion and um i just want to say right off the top uh, i i'm so sorry for your loss and um and i love you marion and your family i wish you know all that stuff and uh and then we also lost uh someone close to you um i i only know him briefly from a stint at caroline's uh paul mooney yeah tough Legend. week yeah yeah. yeah, that one was hard. That one was hard. Charles, not so hard. <laughs> well, you weren't, you didn't, uh, you weren't personally. I didn't know. <laughs> no. Right. I mean, it's always, you yeah. know, I was like, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Marianne. Yeah. Just, you know, my heart's with you, girl. Um, yeah. Mooney, you know, losing your mentor and someone who treated you like his daughter. Like he really, Paul Mooney, for those of you who don't know, look him up just watch it he's the king he's the godfather i used to call him the godfather of comedy and at the comedy store we used to call him the professor he wrote for richard pryor um uh god you know that was his main guy they were writing partners and they were the first black writers inducted into the wga and they wrote sanford and son the jeffersons what's happening good times he was a head writer on a living color uh he was writer on dave Chappelle. you know when Chappelle got the dave Chappelle show first call he did was to paul he said homie i can't do this without you and and, and mooney was like oh you know that's true homie and you know it's it's paul mooney and then like even Whoopi goldberg had a movie this is a weird trivia uh <laughs> yeah <I'll, laughs> hey, i'll I'm take already, for a hundred alex <laughs> I already don't know what, what movie it is, but I'll be enlightened with everybody else. Which one was it? It wasn't Ghost. No, it wasn't Ghost. <laughs> no, she had a, a deal. Was it, was it NBC or ABC to do a Christmas movie? And they wanted her to play the Black Santa Claus. So Paul wrote the script, <laughs> Call Me Claus. How'd that go over? Like a fart in a windstorm. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm already like, really? That was their big idea? ABC yeah. or NBC or whoever? That was the. Wow, it was we're... corny and campy. And it's so funny because Paul Mooney is the last thing you think of of corny and campy. And it right. airs every year at Christmas time. Look for it. Call me Claus. Whoopi Goldberg plays Santa Claus. Taylor Negron is an elf. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> and I played the sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, because Lord knows how many rides. I'm sorry. Um, know how many people have ridden on me and put um, gifts in me? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Lucky you. I um, know, right? I love you. Um, yeah, so that that's just like, so boom, yeah. 
with that, that's, a, you know, that was a lot for the uh, comedy community. Huge and, blow. Huge, huge. And now, uh, yeah. So, I mean, and then the strife around the world, the end. Uh, oh, that was a strip. That wacky old. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank God there's a ceasefire. We'll get into that later. Okay, in lighter news. How about some lighter serious news. candy? <laughs> in, lighter, in lighter news, yes. um, I want to just uh, do a little shout out to, uh, I know it's going to be about me. I'm sorry, just for a second. And then I'm, do okay. It. So, um, so we had a show in West Palm Beach, yes. Sunshine State Comedy. Yes. Myself, Johnny and Johnny Azari producers. Right. Um, we brought it to a place called Respectable Street. There was, you know, and like, really, what is better than a show called Anything But Respectable? Because, you know, it's time for comedy to just unleash like it used to a little bit. You know, we're all pent up with the freaking restrictions and this and that. And yep. even SNL, even SNL pokes fun at that. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But, uh, you know. Uh, everybody just said what they wanted to say, but we were at Respectable Street, which is like a, a rock and roll, sort of a punk venue. Like it's a, it's really for musicians. It's like, a, it's, you know, it's a room for, you know, bands and whatnot. And I, can, I, can't, I can't believe how, how it all just came together. And of course, you know, I have fear. Uh -huh. Every single time I do a show, it doesn't matter if it's a show that I'm producing or a show back in the day when I was at a club and I was hoping that the producer would, you know, bring the people and the thing would right, be busy. You, you have that, you want to do well uh, for the venue, for the yeah. comics, for the yeah. people. It's like, and it's just like, you know, and then, and I always like, I always say like, okay, God, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And, um, and it's always pretty good. Honestly, it always ends up being great. We ended up with, and this is like not a town that I live near. It's right. it's I'm 45 minutes away from West Palm, but I have friends there. Luckily, right. um, they came. Uh, I'm gonna I just shout out to Cheryl. Shout out to Mikey, Mikey G, uh, mm -hmm. and Jeff Hoffman, our friend and follower oh. who loves our show. He was at the show. Wow. Yeah, and we ended up with 40 people. So That's great. Yeah, I'm really happy. So, and the show was terrific. Uh, shout out just to the comics, and then I want to hear how your week was going and is going and was going. Um, that show was Matt Rosen, Brittany Brave, Johnny Azari, uh, Reese Hendrick, Esther Koo, and Flip Schultz. I can't ask really for a better crew on our first, um, you know, foray into a uh, respectable street. We'll be back in June for the folks at home. Fucking how are awesome. you? Yeah. And how you feeling? How was your week? Uh, besides, you know, the blow of Paul Mooney, which I've been preparing for for a long time, but it's, you never prepared. Um, I was in uh, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania Friday night. I was there headlining two shows with mm -hmm. Mark Rickadonna. We did the Naughty and Nice tour. We kicked it off. Um, could not have asked for a better audiences at both shows. It was just magic and uh, got to work with a couple of Philly comics I've never heard of, really fucking funny. And it was just a great show, a great venue. It was at the Great American Pub in Phoenixville. It's a nice place. It's a really nice, it's a lot nicer than I thought it was gonna be because I expect the worst, you know, I'm used to <laughs> back alley, sweetie. And you know, performing in dumpsters, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, but it was beautiful. And now that things are opening up a little bigger, um, Cisco Hernandez with Over the Wall Comedy Productions, he's there based in uh, Valley Forge at the Valley Forge Casino is his base. So now that things are opening up and things are getting live, they have a 4,000 seat theater. They've got like a 300 seat showroom and like an 80 seat intimate little bar. So he's got all these spaces. So Does he I need asked, help? Yeah, no, <laughs> I told him, he, he asked me to ask you to help him. Are you serious? Yes, that's what I was getting to. What? Yeah, so I'm pairing you and Cisco up to take over the East Coast. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. I have nothing to shimmy. Why am I, I got even bothering? <laughs> I, I want to just say for the kids at home, I know we started off on the note of seriousness, but I, <laughs> I said, you know, 
listen, I can't keep talking about cholesterol and um, so, and ultrasounds on my abdomen. Uh, I got to show a little skin. So this is for the kids. Hey, I still got it. Okay. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm trying too hard. What do you still uh, got? Yeah, High cholesterol? Hey! Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I don't know what to eat. All I, it's Brussels sprouts and cauliflower, like you know, all day, all day, all day, hurry, hurry day, <laughs> all day, air day, air day. You know, as you get older, you lean just to really feel that pressure release. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And the water with um. Speaking of the water. Good. Oh, look what I, look what I got. Wait, look oh, what, what it says. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> wait, can you, wait, I, what's that say? I'm not trash. <laughs> Who wants to drink water that says it's not trash? That's my Me. name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at, hold it up. Hold it up to Is the that... screen. Hold it up to the screen so it's, uh, I'm not trash, bitch. <laughs> I put uh, the, uh, what is it? The apple cider vinegar in this. Mm -hmm. It's really delightful. Mm. Is it? All right, Brody and Stevens. And apparently- Apple cider vinegar, you got mm. it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so yeah, um, but um, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm just trying to like, you know, kick it up a notch with the Honey, outfit. You have a great I rack, show them off. I've got more padding than the New York Giants offensive line. So, you know, I'm like your before picture. When we go to a plastic surgeon, I'm the before, she's the after. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's backwards. Hold on. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, boom, boom. It's like oh, bear. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, I was barely a B. I was barely a B till my mid forties and that's where everything shifted. Cause you get a little older and blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares, blah, blah. But it landed here as I've often said. So let's talk about <laughs> anything but my boobs right now. <laughs> it's, it's show anything you, ever know, I, you know, uh, <laughs> bra sizes are a lot like bingo. 34 B, 34 B, G 53. <laughs> 36 C for anyone who cares. Maybe a 38 at this point. Good night. I'm out. Hey, 36 C, how big my boobs are, sweetie. Nothing. <laughs> Fuck you, Chad, you dude. <laughs> at this point, it's <laughs> at this point, it's 36, 36, 36. <laughs> Mine's 12, 80, and 100. Ah, <laughs> oh, happy Monday. I'm home like job of the hunt, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh did i just i lost i lost an earring uh like in the show it just said okay fuck, fuck that. bye <laughs> hey oh, just okay. now get get on the scale quick get on the scale quick you're that <laughs> oh, much lighter i have to take the other one out because that's just annoying oh sorry <laughs> but oh now i lost the back piece. great fuck this this is the guy yeah i can't you know how hard it's great this carpet, I think, was once beige. <laughs> this, this carpet, whatever this. <laughs> well, thank God it's purple now. <laughs> I'll never find it. It's a clear, teeny, whatever. Um, whatever. So, um, so uh, at least, at least you didn't break your headphones. Like, <laughs> listen, I, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's the cost. You know, we're you. I, I happen to notice we're gonna we're moving this thing to Patreon, which we're gonna talk about uh, after the show, I'm sure. But we're gonna hopefully you people that watch, uh, yeah. all well, seven thousand of you, yeah, seven thousandths of a person watching. <laughs> uh, you know, but, can you look at help help the girls out here? Yeah, and by oh, girls, I are, don't mean these guys. Right. Um, oh, now we lost them. <laughs> we did. Uh, uh, but the, yeah, we are moving to Patreon in June and it's going, the show is going to be a step up and a little bonus stuff on it. So you need to tune in, but we will still air the, the promo clips as advertising, you know, that we do, but um, the show is moving to Patreon in June and mm -hmm. uh, there are going to be a little changes and some upgrades and some extra bonuses. So you're not going to want to miss out. 
And uh, yes. yeah, so we'll let you guys know when that exact date launches and what it entails. But we love you for supporting us this far, like a brassiere. Get a brassiere. I used the whole word, sweetie. <laughs> or is it brasserie? Oh, okay. I like to order a baguette at my brasserie. <laughs> I, I I already know that the show title's coming out of this moment. Um, <laughs> and, but let's uh, let's talk about something that's been kind of like you know on all our minds, and I think SNL kind of captured it. There's a couple, the, the uh, Che and uh, and um, Joseph. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Senile no one, moment. No one remembers the white guy. <laughs> Exactly. Um, no, Black lives I, matter. I, you know why? Because he's taken. I don't think about dudes. That <laughs> <laughs> he's got that hot Scarlett Johansson. Um, I know. No, but he's a smart dude. Uh, they're both. Uh, I he love them smart. Both. He married Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Case in point. Um, but uh, but there was a segment before that where they did the um, the Hollywood Squares, nineteen ninety eight version uh of cancel culture hilarious so great i mean all the people that they mentioned you you can't mention anymore really or right. like you just can't you can't i don't even want to mention them for the sake but if you watch snl you know what we're talking about I, I those guys it. yeah i missed it yeah. i just saw that clip the that we were that we're going to talk about um because somebody sent it to me because i didn't i was not home because i was busy being funny you were busy being funny. I was busy, you know, running a show. I, I tried yeah. to catch up on it, but they, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a good point uh, segment. And um, but the, but the one segment I think we both watched was their swapping of jokes. It's right? my they, favorite thing on Saturday yeah. Night Live. Is it when, when uh, for those of you who don't know, Michael Che and Colin Jost write jokes for each other that are racist and very offensive. And, and the other person doesn't know what they are until they're reading them on the teleprompter. And to watch Colin Jost get so uncomfortable is hysterical. And Che just goes for the jugular. And it's really brilliantly done. And the thing I love about it the most, that like people look at it at the surface, it's, oh, it's funny to watch a white guy get nervous doing black jokes. No, the brilliance of this is the fact that they're sneaking in people very slowly, like tiptoeing, like just the tip, you know, just the tip. Just the tip. And familiar with it. No, right. Hello. I didn't realize the tip was eight inches. Good night. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but mm -hmm. the thing is, is that showing that we can poke fun at each other and it's okay to laugh. And that's the beauty of how they set up the segment. And exactly. It's so perfect. Like it's it's okay to laugh and poke fun at each other because it's coming from love and funny and from a a, a sweet place and a loving ball busting place. Mm -hmm. It's not coming from malicious intent or mean or angry or visceral racist rage. It's silly fun. And that's what makes that bit work so well with those two because they're so they're both so funny together. And mm -hmm watching Colin just and even Che just like trying like oh my god I can't believe I'm saying this and the way they write the jokes for each other it's just it's fantastic and it's just I think that's a tipped away to teach people let stop hanging on so tight to canceling everybody because they say something silly about somebody else and just like relax the grip a little bit and start seeing that not everything is racist some things are really funny yes there are racist shit with the Tony Hinge cliffs in the world but that shit is brilliant. Right. Well, exactly. And like not, I mean, if you go through the history of art and and things that entertained us through the years, the, you know, the decades, the eras of, you're going to find fault somewhere within the structure of that. Somebody did something, you know, and, um, and uh, it's, but does that take away? And I guess that that's the bigger question. Not funny, but does it take away? from what the freaking thing it is. Okay, I'm out. Okay, well, I'm back in. So, okay. <laughs> well, the thing is like Chris Rock was just in the trades the other day talking about if people don't take chances, it's going to destroy art altogether. You have to take chances. 
These things are there for a reason. And I was talking to a friend of mine today. I said, people, characters like Archie Bunker and George Jefferson that yeah. were both so pompous and prejudiced in their own mind, but everybody has a relative or a friend that is just like that. And the thing about the, the all in the family and the Jeffersons and characters that were that strong and that prejudice against others was so brilliant because it helped us laugh and poke fun at it and deal with it and talk about it and show people how, like, look how dumb they are. Like, look how stupid it is to think like that. Because we're, you know, it was so brilliant. Like there's there, the sitcoms in the eighties and the seventies, there will be never anything like it again. Well, that, that's, that's exactly right. And that's why the, like watching those two brilliant uh, comic minds do the swapping of the jokes and that sketch, which I thought was uh, really funny, um, the uh, Hollywood Squares thing. I also like that host, Anya, whatever her name was. Um, Anya uh, Dick. No, I'm just <laughs> It's the second Anya in weeks. There's a lot of Anyas out there. Right. Quite, quite talented and uh, incredibly attractive. Also, wow, very thin, like d alarmingly thin. Ooh, but uh, but I'm not trying to you know say anything bad. I just she was thin, and um and that's what I like mean. I want to be side, like Upper East Side thin or Karen Carpenter like thin? really thin. Uh, mm. like yeah yeah. Sounds so good. uh you know it's you know listen. I knew a a woman that worked for the Letterman Show. I'm not going to say in what capacity. Stunningly beautiful woman, mm -hmm. and what women do and uh, obviously i'm not one of them to lose weight and to be in that field because it's so competitive i know it's like <laughs> i know i'm not one of them I'm like uh, what am i eating after this um <laughs> is uh is it's 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 scary what people do all right yeah um i see it all but, the time i see these but, girls in the gyms when i'm working out and i'm like what are you doing you're gonna kill yourself like their backs look like zippers the spine because that's so what i'm saying thin. yeah it's it was like pretty thin it's so sad i pray for them like girl eat a sandwich they're delicious i get it but my dad used to say all the time you gotta be you know you, you know those women are really you gotta go to the gym you can't eat the way you do and i, I mean my dad was right about a lot of a lot of things uh and uh Parents the truth is you know i mean isn't there an app now to like adjust me throughout the film to be thinner i'm sure there is like oh. she's that i you know like, there's nothing. This is me. Like, there's no work. I haven't, like, I did the thing here, like, a couple, like, a year ago. So this is my freaking face. These are my lips. <laughs> this is it. Like, there's nothing else. I didn't do anything else. Yep. And, uh, but I, I need to lose. I still do. All right. Um, You're doing good, what else? Thank you. I am. Just, you know, listen, I have other issues that I have to deal with. Issues have the whole subscription. Hey. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, all right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about like what restrictions and then i want to i want to you know we have our fan mail uh oh. what the, what did they lift in new york what what's been lifted my eyes thank you <laughs> <laughs> well i no longer because i'm vaccinated all right. vaccinated people don't have mm -hmm. to wear masks outside unless the private business requires them to because a lot of these businesses the people these kids haven't gotten vaccinated yet. So we right. keep them on indoors until you sit down. Um, I've since yesterday or yesterday, what's today, Monday, since Saturday, when I went back to the gym, cause I was gone all week, I walked in with my mask on and the Queens on the counter, like, girl, do you, do you not hear about the mandate? I said, there's a man to date. <laughs> hey, I'll take him. You know, <laughs> I hope you, I really, God, I hope you really, I hope you really said that. That's yeah. hilarious. Oh my God. They so, would have been like, oh, she's I, our favorite. Yeah. Uh, no, I am their favorite. They love mm -hmm. me. So mm -hmm. I read the sign that said, if you're vaccinated, you'd no longer have to wear a mask. You gotta wear a mask. And I saw like Cuomo, you have to wear the mask. Gotta wear a mask. Why? Because you gotta wear a mask. But, uh, so I literally did the strip tease in the lobby of the gym <laughs> and took it off and working out without a mask for the, you know, the last, mm -hmm. you know, since they reopened in September, last six, seven months, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. 
I thought I was really cardiovascularly out of shape. You know, even after getting COVID, I thought, oh, wow, that really did some damage to my lungs. Mm -hmm. uh, and the damage was the mask. <laughs> That's really interesting that you say that because I was listening to the radio uh, in the car because I get to drive. And I don't mean damage like the mask did damage to me. I was just saying it was just really hard to breathe because now that I'm pulling all this weight, yeah, I'm not gasping for air under a fucking mask and sticking my head out the window or hyperventilating. Right. But I think the mask, which is like an old Russian thing about this breathing stuff that I learned from Pavel from Strong First, about mm -hmm. these breathing exercises, how to breathe and make your uh, oxygen last longer, like for the snatch test with kettlebells and stuff, because we're going on a whole nother tangent. But I'm wow. telling you, I kept thinking to myself, once these masks come off, my cardiovascular system is going to be fucking beast. And it is mm. because I did not get winded when I pulled those fucking weights off the floor like I usually do because it's powerlifting. It's a lot mm. right. And usually I get winded. It felt like nothing. What is and I'm what, like, what holy are you... shit, I'm beast, yo. What can you lift now? A building. <laughs> A sandwich, <laughs> a buffet cart, a dead body. Hey, I'll take things I can lift easily for a hundred dollars. <laughs> Seriously, what's your? I haven't yeah. maxed out yet. Uh, I haven't done a PR since before the pandemic. Okay, what was it before? Before I did my my pandemic PRs before, like before the pandemic hit, I did a three eighty five deadlift, beltless, wrapless. Ooh. My goal is four hundred five, so I'm only twenty pounds away. Uh, I did a I wanted to do 135 overhead press, but I did it for a double before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So that was amazing. And um, my bench was 185. My squat was only like 275 and I want to get it to 315. So this year, cause I was going to do a powerlifting meet for my 50th birthday as a, like, like as a, as a, an accomplishment, like I turned 50, and I was going to do a meet and do a masters and, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, do a act, not a charity meet. Like I usually do, but actually do a real meet and compete hard against some badasses and lose, but I wanted to do it. And the pandemic hit. So my training went out the window. So I never got to do that. So I'm thinking for this next year, I might just do it if I have time, but I've been really busy, but if I have time, I'm going to start training for another meet just to just to do it and see if I can pull. My goal is one plate overhead, which I passed that already. Two plates on the bench, three plates on a squat, four plates on the deadlift. And I'm this close. You're making me hungry with the plates. Hey, can you fix me a plate, Shreddy? Can you fix me a plate? Uh, here's, here's my goal. My goal is the next time in New York, I, wanna, I want you to lift me up. Mm. I want to see you lift me up, lift me up. And I'm, That's yeah, easy. hopefully I'm, ho all right, well, let's see. I want hey, a photo I and I want to, if you guys go on, on my Instagram, if you guys mm -hmm. go on my Instagram at Christy Miller comedy, if you scroll back like a year and a half or so, you can see me squatting Garrett and Gino Bisconti from compound media. Garrett <laughs> weighs 205 pounds. G uh, Gino weighed 180 and I squatted them both in my arms all the way down i'm sorry <laughs> yeah i'm like you should like to pick men up but i don't like to pick you up this way and you guys are too easy <laughs> did he have that damn bandana on oh, no it was pre-bandana because it was pre-bandana pre yeah that bandana I... became his covid mask so if he got yelled at he would just pull it down over his face oh is that what that was for yeah yeah all right well now i guess he could lose it or maybe he's lost it He's I so love funny. you, Gino, but lose funny, you that lost freaking, it. <laughs> <laughs> lose that bandana for the love of God. Uh, I think uh, me and Kevin Dabrowski's wife feel the same way. I, um, I just want to go. I want to go. Hey, Gino, Polly Shore called wants his look back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, <laughs> that was a good one. I know it's, it is good. It's good. It's a good roast. It's a good roast. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I want to get to our fan mail because we're coming oh. up, I'm sure. Yes, we are. We are time. actually right there. All right. So we'll read this really quickly. Um, I, wanna, I want you to pick the Schumers today, uh, these darker ones or the, or the lighter Schumers. I like Which the darker one? ones. All right. We were going the, with the, the li dark. The lighter ones look more librarian. I'm going to undo my hair and fuck the guy on the desk. 
Those are more shimmery. All right. Listen, uh, I think Marisol is our our favorite uh, fan. Um, she has. Uh, she wrote again. Uh, she wrote again. I mean, oh. I love her. Uh, but, all right. So here we go. Um, mm -hmm. Dear Gina and Christy. Oh, this is. Should, should we tell the kids? Like, this is where you interpret the letter. Yeah, uh, you know, her this. intent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So Marisol writes, dear Gina and Christy. Hi, I've been thinking there's a lot of racist shit out there and people really suck. Dear Gina and Christy, I love you, mommies. I'm beginning to wonder why everybody's a fucking racist, right? They're stupid. I don't fucking <laughs> get it, right? You know. She says, I know you probably agree with me, and I'm sure it makes your job harder because you know. Mira, I know you think like me, right? Because you're cute and I'm cute and we all cute, right? And we cute, we don't, we not me, right? We not me, we're so cute, right? So Mira, I love it. Anyway, I know Gina is big into aliens. So I wanna know if you thought they exist and do you think people would be racist against aliens? Just curious. Mira, I know Gina is really grande in the alienos and <laughs> Mira, and I'm wondering, are they, when they come down to earth, like, do you believe in them? And do you think if they came down from like Mars and stuff, like if people would be like racist to them, like, because <laughs> wouldn't they be considered illegal alienos, right? Mira, because they don't have a green card, stupid, right? And you guys bust my balls when I get on the train, right? You all call me all stupid brown stuff, right? Would you call the aliens like gray people or like, you know, fucking faded or something? Mira, where's their green card? They're stupid. Get on your fucking Cadillac, fuck Fucking stupid Mira spaceship and get out of here. Build that <laughs> space wall. Mira, I don't like them. Mira, no. You had me at Mira spaceship. Um, <laughs> that's it. Mira spaceship. Mira. Spaceship. Uh, one of our uh, one of our good friends, Jessica Kirsten, has a great big uh, big. She's a big pen. <laughs> she has a great. She big. probably does because she's a hundred. <laughs> she's a big pen. <laughs> Jessica Curson, you're a big has, fan. <laughs> no, she has a great bit about, you know, I, I want to do it. I, I'm going to not do it. There's a ship in the sky. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Happy Kwanzaa. I know it by I love that bit so much. But anyway, uh, I digress. <laughs> Back to Marisol and the question. I'm going to answer this question. If aliens actually show themselves, people are going to get all bent out of shape. Now, if we can't get along on this planet, if we can't make this shit work here, they're not gonna want anything to do with us. That's it. Hell no. You know, That's my keep, take. Right? I think when the aliens get close <laughs> to the planet, when yeah. they're driving by, I think they hit the gas pedal a little harder, drive faster. They're like, fuck, let's just dive into the ocean. I want nothing like, to do with it. It's almost like they're driving through a really bad neighborhood. Like we're the ghetto of the galaxy. Oh, that's a great name for a movie, Ghetto of the Galaxy. <laughs> Ghetto. This is the... You gave somebody a freaking... Save that shit. You gave somebody an idea. Right. That's so, it. Yeah. They'll, they'll be like mm -hmm. driving their spaceship. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Quick, there's Earth. <gasps> Lock your doors. <sighs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> exactly. I'm telling you, they're going to come, but they're not coming if we're all like this. Oh, and I rest my case. All right. Yeah. Mira, I watch a lot of that ancient alien shit. They're not coming. I know you do. Or they're do you hiding. Go, do you want to go to Area 51? <laughs> I want to go. You listen, um, I'm, I'm working on a bit. No one steal. I'm saying it here first. I don't know if anybody's doing it, but it's my bit to come. But uh, I'm, I actually only know geography because of where an alien or an alien crash has happened or a sighting. <laughs> I'm like, really? In Tasmania? Like, and then I look up where it's at, you know, so that's how I know geography. So it's a good bit, right? It's um, a great bit. It's a great bit. So nobody motherfuck it, because I will get all Marisol on you. All right. Marisol, I love you, mommy. All she right. So you, right? tell me what's up for you uh, for this week, and then I'll tell you what's up for me, and then uh, 
We'll call it a, a day, an afternoon of the I new news. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, love this it. week, we have, as usual, Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on govsradio.com, the latest episode of Christy Unleashed with Mark Riccadonna. And uh, what else is happening? There's a lot of shows coming up in June and July. I'll get into those later when they get closer. And uh, oh, also, um, next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. And uh, Gina and I will not be here because she'll be tanning in the Keys and I'll be blowing guys for 50s on the 95. Because friends do, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we want to take a breather. We've been at this strong for what? This will be the, this is the 33rd episode. All right. Yeah. I think it's the 33rd, 33 weeks in a row without fail. I don't think I've ever done. Well, I actually, yeah, I have done some stuff 33 weeks in a row without fail. Um, but yes, I may not go to the keys, but I may, you know, the weekend has to be like, I need it, yep. you know, like no. you do too. You I, do too. I need we're having a break. breakdown. Um, yeah, I need a yep. break. Like it's no joke, but uh, yeah, we're almost at full term. So we'll be giving birth in 36 yeah, Exactly. <laughs> giving birth to the Patreon is what we're going to give. Um, so uh, real quick, I'm going to, we have, I'm going to, I'm going to like, who am I? I? I hate when I do that. I hate when I get super new. Oh, York. I like, forgot one thing. I totally, I just okay. got on today. Um, this Friday night at 10 PM. I don't remember the name of it, but I'll post it when I, when this is up or I'll post it on my Instagram this week, which is at Christy Miller comedy. You could follow at Christy unleashed. Also, those are both on Instagram. Um, this week, Friday at 10 PM, I am doing a roast, but it's online on a zoom and it's a roast battle, but I am roasting Jim Mandrinos. Who, those of you who don't know who he is, he's a very talented writer, stand up, and he was, uh, one of Kinison's protégés. So he's a sweet, be, he's a sweetheart. He's been nothing but like, you know, my interactions with Jim have always been really great. He's the greatest. Yeah. He's a sweetheart. Um, all right. So, um, all right. So real quick, uh, Wednesday of this week, we will be back at the Dubliner in Boca last week, by the way, I mentioned, I forgot to mention that like it was standing room only. Mm. I mean, I get that it's a free show. I get it. And it's a free show lady. Always funny, always free. That's the tag. Uh, but, um, you know, the, it's caught on. So, and this week, you know, it should really be called New Yorkers. <laughs> you know, it's everybody <laughs> from New York is on this show. I think, I think everybody on the show is a, a you know a Northeast person, except maybe Lalo Rodriguez. But Lalo's on the show. He's uh, been an awesome host for us. Eric Grooms is on the show. Excellent. Uh, it's going to sound like a New York City lineup. James right. Camacho is on the show. Um, Gerard Michaels is on the show. David Sadman is on the show. He's a producer in Florida. He's from the he's from the Northeast um, and a uh, real great guy. Uh, I'm doing some comedy. I might try out the alien bit. And uh, Mike Panzica and uh, who's just they're, they're all awesome. So uh, come on down. Eight o'clock Wednesday. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So Boca Raton needs to be called Boca New York. Hey, <laughs> or Brooklyn, yeah, Boca. Brooklyn Raton. Thank yes. you. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah. So that's it. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Can't mm -hmm. wait to hear your new alien bit. And uh, yeah, me too. I can't awesome. wait to hear it either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so that's it from uh, from us for yeah. this week. Your new noon. Yes. This has been Lunch Money. I've been your host, Christy Miller, and you can follow me at Christy Miller Comedy and Christy Unleashed on the Instagram, and you could also. Click like and subscribe on the YouTube channel at Christy Miller Comedy as well. And this has been Gina Savage, owner and founder of Sunshine State Comedy in Brooklyn, Rattan, New York. Brooklyn, <laughs> at least for this How week. You yep. so, How you doing? <laughs> this has been Lunch Money, and we will see you next Monday. Deuces. <laughs>